Mm-hmm. Hello and welcome to Table Talk. My name is Joni Rampola, one of the registered licensed dietitians with the Giant Company, so your Giant Food Stores and Martin's Food Markets. And we are in the month of June, and June is National Dairy Month. So today we are going to get a very special inside <laughs> look at what it is on a dairy farm. And I have Crystal with us. Crystal, do you want to introduce yourself? Hello. Hi, I am Crystal. I am a second generation dairy farmer in uh, Maryland. Um, We milk 150 cows on our family farm, and that is twice a day, every day. And so June being dairy month, it's a good month. (laughs) And that is amazing. Like I didn't know this until just recently, but Crystal's like 10 minutes from my house. So we are, we are in the same (laughs) neck of the woods. And I think that is so cool. (laughs) So, Crystal, can you tell us a little bit about a little bit more about you and your role on the farm? Um, sure. Yeah, I grew up on the farm, and um, when I was younger, I followed my dad around as much as I could, and realized that maybe that's what I wanted to do when I got older. Um, so, when I turned twenty, after having a few off-farm jobs, I decided to return back, and um, my duties there are all the daily milking. So that's morning and afternoon. And I also look over all of the uh, health and uh, breeding things for our cows. So I make sure that they get all of their vaccines and I do all of their vet checks with our veterinarian, which is two every month. Um, I also oversee, um, make sure our nutritionist comes in every month. Actually, he's in there more than every month too. He's in there a couple of times a month and um, he works with my brother closely. So I make sure that they have what they need. Um, But yeah, that's basically my role there. (laughs) Nice. So I understand that you do this virtual tour for students, which is why we contacted you. How many students approximately are on each tour? Oh boy, I believe Kelsey said we had over, I think there were over a thousand on the one tour and the other one was close to a thousand. Pretty sure what Kelsey said, but it was a lot. (laughs) Wow. Yeah. That's crazy lot. That's awesome. Can you share some of the virtual footage with us? Yeah, I think Kelsey's going to do that, isn't she? (laughs) Yeah. Tell us what we're seeing. Sure, this here is, that's our dairy house. So our milk tank is right inside of there. Um, And then she is going down here um, around. So those cows that you see right there, those are, um, they're like our mamas in waiting. So they're gonna probably calve within two weeks when they're put in that pen. And then down here, we're going down through the barn barnyard. And um, that's a group of our heifers that are over there on the right. Those are, most of those are pregnant also heifers. Some of them are not yet, Um, but that's what that group there is. Yeah, that's them. Yep. And then that looks out into their meadow. You can see how nice and green everything was when we were getting rain. (laughs) Um, And then this over here. This is like manure storage. So that's where that gets put in there, um, the manure. And then the dry cows are over here in the barn that's straight ahead. And then all of the um, bunkers are behind there. That's where all of their food is. That's where we store our silage and whatnot. Here's another group of peppers. (laughs) And there's always a brown one there and they're usually the most curious ones. So they always want to come and say hi. And Kelsey said you had just about 5,000 students in two hours, your two tours. Yes. I knew I read a number, but I forgot the number that fast. These so these are our dry cows. These girls are on vacation. Um, every cow gets a dry period. So these girls get to go in there for two months prior to having their calves. Yeah, that's Tiddly. <laughs> Sorry, I'm not supposed to be reading those questions. But it's okay. That's her name. <laughs> So Brenda says she feels like farm life is much more rewarding than city life. <laughs> um, sometimes, yep, I think it is. <laughs> yeah, sometimes for sure. There's um, something to be seen and something to do every day. 
You say you milk 150 cows. What is considered the average size, number of cows, family, small dairy farm these days? Um, what is considered that? It could be 150. I think I think a farm even with a thousand cows can be, or more than that, can be considered a family farm. I mean, every family is different and it depends on exactly how big you need to be to keep it all rolling. And, um, you know, so there are larger farms and they're still very much considered family farms, I believe. Why a dry period? Why a dry period? So um, every time a cow calves, this starts her new lactation. So um, we give them those two months, their udder will dry up. They won't come to the milk and parlor anymore and their udder will dry up. And we just give them that. It's kind of like a reset um, before they go back to work. Kind of like a teacher. A teacher gets two months to reset, which in my opinion, isn't nearly long enough. <laughs> um, but then she comes back um, after those two months, she has her calf and then she's ready for another strong lactation to provide us with some milk. <laughs> nice. Another customer is asking, what do you store your manure for? We, um, so that is a regulated part of our farm that is um, our state regulates what we do with our manure. Um, it, it can be used for fertilizer and it is used for fertilizer, but there are only certain times of the year that we are allowed to apply it. So we store it. And then when those months pop up that we are allowed to put it onto the field, that's what we do. Nice. How many calves does each cow have in their lifetime? Um, that is, that depends on every cow. Um, uh, a good number would be seven or eight, um, but some don't have that many. Uh, some just decide that maybe being a milk and mom isn't what it's <laughs> not going to work for them. And then others, others can do it more than that. Some of them do it 10, 11, 12 times, but and sometimes we have multiples. You'll have a set of twins here and there. Um, I've even seen triplets before. <laughs> Rare, oh, wow. but I've seen it. <laughs> yep. And Victoria says, thank goodness for farmers. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. So how much milk does each cow produce? Um, each our, our herd is averaging right around 85 pounds. So we measure in pounds. Um, so I know it's easier for you to understand a gallon. Um, so, you know, what a gallon of milk is eight pounds. So that's, that's a lot of milk in a day, isn't it? So if it's 150 and our cows are averaging 85 pounds, yeah, I'll let you do the math on that one. <laughs> it's yeah. a lot. That's a lot of milk. Oh my goodness. A lot of milk. <laughs> and then Brenda says, oh, thank you. Amazing how we can learn from one another. Then how long is a cow's lifetime considered? Um, that one too is it's dependent on them for the most part. Um, I would say on average, they live to be about eight to 10 years old on average. And then Kelsey did the math for us. It's about 10 gallons per cow. Yeah. <laughs> is your milk sold at Giant and Martin's? Yes, it is. It is. Is it their yes. brand? I'm sorry, that's the question. Is it, is it the store brand? It is in their store brands and it is in um, another brand. We are also under Mayola. If you've ever seen Mayola, that is also us. Oh, yeah. that is a short life for a cow. <laughs> <laughs> They're big. Uh, I mean, think about your big dog breeds. They don't live very long either. <laughs> a cow is, is, they're very large animals. They're, it's hard to sustain that, I think. <laughs> so do you raise all the cows that are born on your farm? We do. We raise all of our females. We do. And then our bulls, we send them to market where they will go on to be either bulls or they will be used for steers or, you know, beef, whatever anyone purchased them there for. So I have a customer question. Do you do one? I think I'm going to rephrase what they said because I think this is what they meant. Do you do lactose-free milk on your farm? We do not. Um, there is not a such thing as, well, let me rephrase. It can be made in to be gentler on your stomach, but what the cow actually produces 
is not. There is a new gene that we can breed for in our cows, which makes it A2A2. And that has the, the milk protein is a little different. So that's a little better for your belly. That is what is found in, oh, Kelsey might have checked me on this one. Is that what Fair Life is? Is there's the A2A2? It's A2 milk. The brand is, is called A2, A2 milk. It is. Okay. Well, I'm glad some, somebody knows. Yeah. So that is something that I have looked into. And um, if I know that one of my cows carries that A2 gene and I made her to a bull who has the A2 gene, then her milk will ultimately be A2, A2. But that's not my goal at the moment for our herd to be completely A2, A2. I do recognize that is important. Um, you know, consumers need choices and especially if you know, someone is unable to have milk in their diet. That's sad. <laughs> it's pretty, I would miss it. I knew that. Customer comment, I'd be afraid of getting attached to my cows. It happens. Um, it does happen there. Everybody has favorites and um, it does happen, but I recognize what their purpose is and um, why they're here. And so I give them the very best life I can while they're here <laughs> and then they move on. <laughs> yep. I just want to clarify what Fair Life milk is since you asked about that. So Fair Life it is a lactose free milk, meaning they do remove the lactose, but they don't promote themselves as lactose free. The lactose is the milk sugar. So they promote themselves as being right. higher in protein and lower in sugar. And right. that's. That's the platform that they stand on, but just want to clarify that. Yes. And what do, I think they ultra pasteurize. So they, there's yes. stays a little more shelf friendly, right? Yes. So I heard you have some video footage of the calves to share <laughs> with us too. Like we all love babies, right? Is that something yeah. we can see? <laughs> Absolutely. Let me see it. Yes. We do have some footage of the calves for sure. And then you have a comment. I'm just going to read. You're a very wise farm wife. You see life as it is meant to be. Thank you. Oh, look at that cutie. <laughs> yeah, she's a red and white Holstein. Um, yep. So she's, that's why her coloring is red and not black. But, and next to her is one of our little Jersey calves. She's, she's pretty popular too. <laughs> so these calves are probably, uh, those girls there are probably a month old, a little more than a month. And um, so they get milk in their pail there. They have fresh water in their pails during the day, but we dump the fresh water out of the pails and then they get a gallon of milk twice a day. So morning and afternoon feedings. Those so hutches are full now. We've had a baby boom. <laughs> yeah. What's the little button on their ear? The little button on their ear is called an RFID. Um, and it's, so it's radio frequency. So that is, um, that is also a state, a statewide requirement now um, for all of our animals, but that also helps us. So if she were to leave the farm, um, anyone who is equipped with one of the wands that checks that number with, for the radio frequency, they, it'll pop up and they can trace her back to us. Um, so we have like, it all goes together. All of our numbers come from the same batch of numbers. So yeah. Every cow How old are they? Oh, sorry. How old are they when they start getting milked? Um, when they start getting milked, mm -hmm. um, they are usually two years old when they have their first calf. And then that is when their lactation will start. They produce milk, um, just like a woman. They start producing milk when they've had a baby, when they've calved. And that's at two years, two years old. Yeah. What is the average birth weight of the calves? Um, for a Holstein calf, that is anywhere from 80 to 100 pounds, it can be. And then the little Jersey calves are smaller, so they're closer to 50, 60 pounds. They're they're really tiny. They look like baby deer when they come out. <laughs> and then a customer says, I once put my hand in a calf's mouth, and all she did was suck on my hand. Yes. <laughs> the yep. owner assured her that the calf wouldn't hurt her, and it was fun. <laughs> <laughs> yep, they will do that. That's for sure. Grown cows too. They like to lick you too. They're very, very, very curious. <laughs> how early are the calves weaned and how often do they get milk supplemented? Um, they will be weaned completely off of a milk diet, went right around two, two and a half months. Um, 
So then they'll no longer have milk in their diet. And really they're, they're done with it by the time they're that old. They're, they eat a lot of, they, they're starting to eat a lot of grain by that point. And then they also uh, get hay added into their diet after they have moved out of the hutch. That's our pasteurizer for the calf milk. So we pasteurize all of our calf milk um, just as extra precaution um, for the calves. Their bellies are not fully developed um, when they're just babies. So that's just an extra precaution. Make sure there's not any bugs in there. And the customer is asking, what's the difference in the colors? In the colors, that's just the same breeds. So they're all, we have Holsteins and Jerseys. This is a Jersey calf. Um, and then the red ones are what we call it red. Um, those are Holsteins. We have black and white and red and white Holsteins on our farm. So we've got three different colors <laughs> and then the little jerseys. The little jerseys are, they're, they're, they're a smaller breed than our Holsteins. They're, they don't get quite as big. And a customer says they're so pretty and so clean. Yeah, they are. We, we, we try our best to keep them clean. There's keep the flies down. Um, you know, the cleaner you are, the healthier everybody is when you're clean. <laughs> yeah, so for sure. Can you explain why the cows are in their individual pens? Um, yes. Yeah. So like I like I said about um, the milk and why we pasteurize, their uh, calf's immune system is, is nothing when it comes out. So um, when a calf is born, we quickly get their colostrum into their stomachs um, because they it helps the belly start making the bugs that are needed you know, everybody's got bugs in their belly, but the mother's colostrum carries that and carries her immunoglobulins to this calf. And that gets in there, just gets her belly going and um, starts the growth of the good bacteria. Um, so that is why we keep them apart because they're, they're not going to have a full blown immune system for quite a while until they can receive some of their vaccines. And some, and they also get some vaccines right at birth too, but there are some vaccines they can't get until they're weaned. So we just keep them apart for that reason. So it sounds like you do a lot to care for your animals. Like why is animal care important to you as a farmer? Um, I am their caretaker. They can't do it. <laughs> so I will definitely do it. I mean, the same as my children, you keep them healthy. If you can keep them healthy, I feel like prevention is far easier than treatment in any, in anything. Um, so yeah, if we can uh, take every precaution to keep them as healthy as possible, we certainly do. We, you know, we take care of their feet. We trim their feet twice a, it's every month actually, we've backed off to every month, but we do that as well. And that helps them immensely too, just their mobility. Like I said, they're big, big girls. So they need excellent mobility. So we do that as well on top of all the vaccines and everything else that they get. My customer is asking, do you ever have to bottle feed any of the calves? Yes, yes. Some of those, they start out on the bottle. Um, so they'll be on a bottle for two weeks. We try to get them on the, on the pail about two to three weeks, but some take a little longer than others. They're just not quite ready to give up the bottle and nipple yet. But yes, all calves start on the bottle for sure. <laughs> yep. Yeah. So what, what type of questions the kids ask you when you're on tour? Oh, they asked some good ones. They asked some good ones. They wanted to know how big they were. They wanted to know what they ate. Um, and um, when we showed them in the barn, what, you know, what they ate and, and how big they are, they are, our whole scenes average almost 2000 pounds. So they're, they're pretty big girls. They're, um, you know, they're big girls and they're, you know, almost equally as they're, they can be every bit of five, seven to six feet tall at their shoulders. And then the little jerseys, they're not quite as big. They're closer to just a thousand pounds and they're shorter, shorter in stature. But they asked that and um, they asked a lot about the calves and what the calves ate. And um, yep, they asked a couple of names, the younger kids, the elementary kids. They had a lot of good questions, elementary kids. Boy, I'm trying to remember what some of the others were. So what do your cows eat and how much? Um, they eat, um, they eat a mixture. It's called, we call it a TMR. So it stands for total mixed ration and that it all goes into a mixer wagon that's hooked onto a tractor. Um, so those bunkers that we saw in the first, um, 
little slide tour showed it's um, our silage that gets stored. So we chop, we chop corn when it is still green and then it ferments and that is called silage. We also do that with A and that's called haylage. And that along with some grain and um, some other vitamins, and minerals, whatever our nutritionist, whatever recipe he comes up with for our milk cows, um, we add all of that into the mixer wagon and it kind of blends it together, just like a blender would. And then we run that off into their feed trough every morning. Um, they get a fresh batch every, every day. And um, that is what they eat throughout the day. And they, they eat, over, they eat a hundred pounds of feed a day, I believe is what I have heard. And it's, it's a lot. They got big bellies. <laughs> they, they got big bellies. <laughs> yeah. Sure. So customers asking being so large, how do you get them in place for milking? Um, our parlor is made, um, is made for a Holstein herd. Number one, you can customize them a little bit. So they just, they fit. It's it. I don't know how to explain it, um, but it, they can index themselves in our parlor. So they, if they need to take a little more room because they're one of our longer cows, they can. And um, if they need to take a little bit of their neighbor's room for their bellies, they can, <laughs> they can. Um, but yes, our, our parlor is self-indexing. So it accommodates a lot of different sizes, a lot of different sized animals. How often do they eat each day? They spend most of their day eating or um, they, they're they only resting. So they go to work probably 10 hours a day, maybe. If if you count in, if you count in the two milkings, um, which are take up maybe an hour and a half of their day, then they will be eating. So I guess I shouldn't say how many times do they eat. They can eat as much as they want. It's a buffet all day long. <laughs> they have it um, at their access whenever they feel that they are ready to get up and go get something else to eat, they will, or they will rest, but cows um, rest more than they don't. That is when they're ruminating and producing a milk for sure. So, yeah. So a customer is asking if your farm's in Carroll County, let's give a shout out to your farm. Where are you? <laughs> yes, we are. We are in Westminster. We are in Westminster, Maryland. So we are, um, we're on the outskirts of Westminster actually. Yeah. <laughs> yes, very exciting. <laughs> so good. Thank you so much. And we're so appreciative of you spending this time with us and sharing no all about it. Like, why do you think that's important to share? You do tours, you bring people in. I do. I think it's important because there are so many people who haven't ever visited a farm. And I think it's important for you to know where your food comes from. That goes for beef too. I mean, if you if you're if you have the opportunity to visit anywhere or learn about it, you really should go to the source if you can. Um, they're going to give you straight answers, <laughs> and um, that that's why. So if if anyone ever asks me for a tour, I'm always happy to do it. Grazing like a cow, somebody's <laughs> grandmother used to say. Yes. <laughs> Do you ever get cows that don't get along with the rest of the herd? Very, very rarely, very rarely. Um, we have some that are known as the bosses and they're a little more pushier than others, but cows are herd animals. They want to be with others. So for the most part, they all get along. There's, I, I can't say I've ever had one that just didn't, couldn't get along with others. So yeah, I would say that would be a very rare circumstance. And then just a fun fact, less than 2% of the population is directly involved in farming. Wow. Then a customer question, do you allow visitors to the farm and purchase off of the farm directly? We do not sell products off of our farm directly. We do not. There are, I have a lot of neighbors that do, um, that they will sell milk or cheese. Cheese is popular to be made right now. Um, and ice cream. We have a lot of local ice cream places that we hit, <laughs> um, but we do not do that. But yes, I, we are happy to have people in. We need to schedule ahead of time, especially in the summertime. Summer is very busy for us, but um, definitely if there's ever a group of people that want to come in and see what it's all about, for sure. Is there anything else you want to share with us for June Dairy Month? Maybe a cool <laughs> recipe or something. Oh, a cool recipe. Boy, what's my favorite? Honestly, my favorite is just plain old strawberry milk. That's not much of a recipe. 
<laughs> but I do have a ton of recipes that um, contain cream cheese. And one of my favorite things to take to like a cookout is I will just take a block of cream cheese and um, two cups of shredded cheddar and I mix it into like a cheese ball. It's not your typical cheese ball. And then I add a little Worcestershire sauce in there and a dash of lemon juice and crackers. And that's one of my favorite things to take to a summer cookout. <laughs> there you go. Perfect. Well, thank you. So appreciate your time here with us. No problem. Wait, got another question. Does a newborn calf not nurse directly from the mom? And how is the colostrum collected? It is not nursed directly from the mom, no. Um, so after a cow calves, we try to get her into the milking parlor within the hour and um, to take her first colostrum. And then what we actually test errors are every cow's colostrum. So we have something called a refractometer. So that will tell us uh, how, without getting too science-y nerdy on you, but that gives us a, a number and that tells us the quality of this cow's colostrum. So if it's a certain number or higher, that's a good high number of immunoglobulins that are in the milk. And that is the best transfer um, from, from belly, from mom to baby once it hits her belly. So that's why we don't let them nurse. We make sure we get the colostrum. We check the check the number on the classroom, and then we can make sure we get the correct amount into her because it's important to get that gallon in a newborn baby right away. So if she's nursing, we have no idea how much she's getting or if it's even good what she's getting. And um, yeah, so that's, that's why we do, that's why we do that for sure. Great. Customer said they've enjoyed this. They haven't been inside of a dairy barn since they were a kid. They live <laughs> close to a family farm, but sadly that farm sits empty for the past several years. Yeah, there's a lot of those, unfortunately. Another question, does the mom's colostrum have to go to her specific calf or can it go to just any calf? It can go to any calf. I try to give it to her calf, um, but if, if someone calves the next day or something and it maybe she doesn't have much colostrum she doesn't have that whole gallon which that'll happen especially on a first time mom sometimes they don't quite have it figured out that fast then I can use that mom's um the mom from yesterday we just store it in the refrigerator for a few days and we also end up freezing some if we need it frozen just in case just to have colostrum is liquid gold they call it and it it, it is <laughs> you don't want to you don't want to waste any good colostrum for sure Absolutely. It is for the calves, right? It is. It is. And I have the link to send out that I will send out with this for where you get your favorite dairy recipes. So Okay. Perfect. Perfect. And do you do this more than once after the first milking? Um, we don't. No, we, they, the calves will get colostrum for their first three feedings, but the mother's very first milk, that is basically her, the true colostrum that we want to save. So um, we will save her milk for the next couple of times, but it'll all go into the pasteurizer for the cans. Yeah. And the customer is asking if you can share the name of the farm if we want a tour. Sure. It is Pheasant Echoes Farm in Westminster. We used to have a lot of pheasants when we first moved there. So that's, we heard them all the time. So that's where the name came from. But unfortunately, we don't have very many pheasants left. <laughs> yep, that's pheasant it. Pheasant Echoes Farm in Westminster. Mm -hmm. Yes. Thank you. Well, this has been great information. We so appreciate it. And customer says, wow, she is so knowledgeable and so very, <laughs> very passionate. Really enjoyed this. So thank you, Crystal, for your time. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, we really appreciate it. And I will send out your favorite recipe link um, okay. and the recording after this. So thank you all for being with us and we'll thank see you. you next week.